In this section of the course, we're going to take a look at how we can format our worksheets and make them more readable. And we're going to start out in this lesson by taking a look at something really important, and that is number formatting. And we've briefly touched on this in previous lessons, but now it's time to really do a deep dive so you can understand how some of the most important number formats work. Now, the first thing you need to remember about number formats is that they are simply a mask. Number formats don't change the underlying number, they just apply formatting on top of the cell. For example, if I click in any cell that contains a number, so I'm going to go for B6, if you take a look in the formula bar up here, you can see that it says 2000. It's reflecting exactly what's in the cell that I'm clicked in. And you'll see in a moment, when we apply formats to these numbers, even if the number looks different in a cell, maybe it has a currency symbol in front of it, when we click on the cell and take a look in the formula bar, the number is always going to be 2000, no matter what formatting we've applied over the top. So the number underneath will always stay the same. Now, why do we apply number formats? Well, a lot of the time when you type a number into a cell, we want it to look a little bit different. If we're dealing with currency, maybe we want to have the currency symbol in front of it. Or maybe we want to apply date formats or time formats. Or maybe we want to make numbers look like a percentage. We can do all of this using number formatting. Now you'll find your number formatting options on the home ribbon in the number group just here. And notice we have a big old drop down with quite a few different formats in here. We can also click more number formats at the bottom, which will open up the format cells dialog box. And this dialog box, we're going to use this throughout the entire balance of this section. And on the number tab, this is where we have more details about each of these different number formats. So let's go through and start applying some of these because there are a few little things that you need to know when you're working with your number formatting. So if we take a look in column B, you can see that we just have a list of plain numbers. Now, if I just want my numbers to look like this in the cells, that's absolutely fine. I can leave them. Notice that currently I have the general number format applied. Now, general is something that gets applied to most cells when you first type something into them. It doesn't have any specific format. Pretty much what you type, that's what you're going to see in the cell. But notice underneath, we have a specific format for numbers. So if we click on this, notice what it does. We now have two decimal places and a dot in the middle. Now, if that's what you want this number to look like, then you can leave it as it is. But we could also do some modifications to the way that this looks. For example, if I don't like the number of decimal places, I can go up to the number group and notice I have two little arrows here to increase the decimal or decrease the decimal. So if I decrease, I can take that down to one, or I can take it away entirely, or I can click the other one and increase the decimal places. So this is really entirely up to you. Also notice that if I want something completely different, I have a comma style separator. So if I click this, it's going to put a comma between the one and the zeros. And again, I could take those decimal places down if I wanted my numbers to look like that. So you have a few different options in there when it just comes to formatting plain numbers. I generally like to have mine with a comma separator. Let's move on to the next column where maybe we want to format these as currencies. So once again, I'm going to select everything. Let's do control shift down arrow this time. And I'm going to click on the little diagonal arrow to jump me into the format cells dialog box. And I'm going to choose currency from here. Now, it's worth noting that you don't have to come into this format cells dialog box. If you take a look at the number group again above, notice I have a little currency symbol just here. So I could simply click this to apply whatever my default currency is. But I like to come into here because I get a few additional options that I can adjust. So the first thing to do here is really to select the currency symbol that you want to use. Now, the default for me is the dollar symbol. But if you click the drop down, you have all of the different currencies in here. And we can choose how many decimal places we want. Notice just above, we have a little preview. If I were to take these down, it's going to show me in the preview what that's going to look like. So I'm actually going to have two decimal places this time. And I can also choose how I want to format negative numbers in this list. So if I had some minus figures in here, I could choose if I want to format those in red or if I want to have them in brackets or maybe even red in brackets. Now, in this list, I don't have any. So we're just going to stick with our two decimal places. Click on OK. 
and that's what it looks like. Now, accounting format, this is an interesting one. Let's control shift down arrow. Again, we're gonna open up format cells. And if you want a quick way to get into that format cells dialog box, you can press control one on your keyboard. Now, accounting format is pretty similar to currency format. We come in here when we want to apply a currency symbol to the front of our number, and we can also adjust the number of decimal places. But the big difference here between accounting format and currency format is that accounting format will line up in the column the decimal place. So if I click on OK, you'll see that it does look slightly different from currency format. If I widen out these columns to make it more obvious, currency format has the currency symbol pushed right up against the number, whereas accounting format has the currency symbol flush with the left hand margin. And what you'll find is that no matter what number you type into here, what, whatever the length of the number is, it's always going to line up the decimal place. Hi from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course, and gain access to over 200 courses ad-free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. Now, the idea behind counting format is that it's really been built for accountants who maybe have to read down long lists of numbers. The decimal place being in the same place makes the number easier to read and also easier to perform calculations. So that's the difference between accounting format and currency format. The next one that we have is date. So let's control shift down arrow. Now, if we were to click the drop down here, notice that we have options of short date or long date. So I currently have short date applied. If I was to apply long date and just widen out that column, you can see that that's what I'm going to get. If we go into format cells and go into date, you can see we have many more different formats we can choose from in here. So if I wanted to display the year first, then the month, then the day, I can click on OK and it's going to apply that format. So lots of different date formats for you to choose from. The same thing goes with time, control, shift, down arrow. Again, if we click the drop down, we have time in here. Or alternatively, control one to see more options. Let's go into time. We can choose the time format that we want. So maybe you want to have these on a 12 hour clock, but you want to specify if it's AM or PM. You can select this one just here, click on OK, and it's going to put in that AM and PM text. Now, when it comes to percentages, this is where it's a little bit different. I've got some just regular numbers that I've typed into the cells, and maybe I just want to convert these into percentages. So you might think that you can just make your selection, control shift down arrow, go up to the number group and notice we have a percentage icon just here. Now, if I click on this, check out what happens. This isn't really what I wanted it to look like. So let's control Z to undo. Why isn't it just giving me 5%, 10%, 15? Why is it putting in all of these extra zeros? Well, it's because percentages work a little bit different in Excel. If you want to simply apply percentage style to a list of numbers and have them look correct, your numbers need to be written out slightly differently. So instead of five, we would need to have 0 0.5 in the cell. You can see as soon as I do that and click on the percentage symbol, I then get 50%. Now that can be a little bit of a pain if you have a long list of numbers already written out like this, do you need to go back in and convert them, essentially divide them by 100? And the answer is yes, you kind of do. So how can we get around this? What if we have numbers like this in our spreadsheet and we just want to apply percentage style and have these look correct? Well, there is a little trick using paste special. Now we haven't got to the section on cutting, copying and pasting in this course as yet. So we're going to revisit this once we've learned a little bit more about those features. And I'm going to show you how you can quickly convert all of these to percentages. Another note about this is if you have percentage formatting applied to the column before you put the numbers in, then it works fine. So if I was to select column I and choose the percentage style, if I was to then go in and type in 50%, that's going to work no problem. So if you don't have any numbers in the column, you can apply percentage style first and you can just type your numbers in. 
If you already have numbers in here and you're just trying to convert them to percentage, you're going to get these weird numbers. So just be aware of that. We will revisit this a bit later on. Now, the final column that I have in this table is just a mixture of positive and negative numbers. If we control shift down arrow and press control one to open up format cells, we can go to number formatting. And as I said, we can choose if we want to apply negative number formatting as well. So I'm going to say that I want zero decimal places. I want to use a thousand separator and I want any negative numbers to show in red and in brackets. Let's click on OK and you can see how that applies formatting to those numbers. And as I mentioned, with any of these number formats that we've applied, if I click on any cell, so let's go for H6, notice in the formula bar, it doesn't have the formatting up there. It just has the actual number that's underneath in the cell. The same with cell C6, you can see it just has the plain number. It doesn't show the formatting because the formatting is just a mask that sits on top. And the formatting is applied to the cell. So if I was to delete out all of these numbers and start typing other things, the formatting is still going to be there. So whatever I type into these formatted cells is going to take on that number formatting. Now, the final thing to note here is notice that I have a little phone number over in cell K4. Now, there is a format specifically for things like phone numbers, zip codes and social security numbers. Now, this very much applies to the US only. If we press control one to open up format cells and go to special down here, notice we have these four in here. So other countries don't necessarily have zip codes. For example, in the UK, we have postcodes that take on an entirely different format to the US. Also, our phone numbers in the UK are a completely different format. So if you're in any other country other than the US, then this section is pretty useless. But just for all of the US viewers, if you do have a list of phone numbers, you can simply select the phone number formatting in here, click on OK, and it will apply that formatting. Now you can see it hasn't changed a great deal, but if I maybe had numbers which didn't have the dashes in there, you can see now it updates. Now there are other formats in this list which we haven't taken a look at as yet. For example, custom formatting is where you can basically build your own formatting. And this can be really useful. Now it's outside the scope of this course because this tends to fall under more advanced topic, but just be aware of all of the different number formats that you have in here and have a little play around with them. But those are the basics of number formatting in Excel. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.